Oh, Footland, it's Friday. We've got the second half of all of our matchups. We've got the dealing with the awful Philip Rivers. There's a lot to discuss on today's show. You don't want to miss it. This is Melvin Gordon from the Los Angeles Chargers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Welcome into the show, Friday, November 8th. The Fantasy Footballers back with you, Andy Holloway, Mike Wright, Jason Moore. Seven matchups to get through today, the second half of Fantasy Forecast. Ballers on a budget to close out the show. We've got in or out, the injury updates. We've got Foot Clan Friday today. And let me say something to start the show. Mm, that's a good place to begin. If you are a huge fan of stat lines in the realm of three for 40, four for 30, four for 42. I am not. We have a game for you. And that's what we got last night between the Chargers and the Raiders. It was a very competitive game. And, uh, it was a very disappointing game for a number of fantasy players, not named Melvin Gordon. Nope, great game. Josh Jacobs, mm -hmm. in the end, very good. And then Eckler had the touchdown reception to kind of save the day, mercifully. And Hunter Henry got his touchdown. I think that's it. Yeah, that is, <laughs> that is it. And, you know, if you followed my Twitter <clears throat> through the game, you – you uh, my my tilt last night with Philip Rivers, um, how do you what do you uh, 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 suckiness <laughs> his his terrible <laughs> ability to not play quarterback anymore apparently. Um, I was tilting my face off. I know this. Uh, you you moved to the all capital letters for mm. the fourth quarter and beyond in our Slack channel. All caps, one word. Yeah, like, no he space. He no didn't space. even bar. <laughs> didn't have space for space. Uh, five sacks. Phillip Rivers took five sacks. Felt like 20. Three interceptions. Felt like 20. Three interceptions on the books and a few more that got called back. 207 yards, two touchdowns, the second of which came at the, at the four-minute mark of the fourth to kind of you know save you from pure and utter uh, burying yourself beneath the earth. Yeah, I mean, at least this wasn't one of those Jared Goff, Baker, Mayfield you know performances where you you end up how negative. low can you go? You end up with zero. I mean, he he had you know fifteen fantasy points if you're in a six uh, point per touchdown league, but that's still not what you wanted in this matchup in the slightest. You you brought up yesterday on our serious show, Philip Rivers was leading the league in passing yards on the season, which you know seems incredible. We uh, fact checked that. We yeah. we did a little bit, and um, he he just had such a terrible game, and he and. and let me be clear. He looked bad. He missed open receivers. Every deep ball was four yards too far. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, so I'm I'm mourning with all of the Foot Clan yeah. uh, that, that started him alongside myself. The problem with Phillip Rivers is he's generally a consistent guy. But he's – playing Rivers is – does have a little bit of a hot potato in, well, in it, in which – his face looks kind of like Mr. Potato Head. Oh, like a hot potato. So right. it makes sense that he he has one to two of these every single year where he it looks like he forgets how to play quarterback. I I won't blame anybody for not streaming him. No, he should have been a great play forward. No, he plays Kansas City next week. <laughs> but look at nah, yeah, but, but I, I wouldn't mess with the man. Uh, Philip Rivers' offensive line was the problem last night. Philip Rivers is a man with his two feet into cement buckets. So those guys need pockets to throw from. He can still throw the ball, but he can't move. You know, Derek Carr has been able to move around in the pocket. I think that's part of why he hasn't been sacked uh, very often. Last night they got him. But another good game from Carr. The Raiders have a very favorable second half. I mean, in as far as uh, 
the team won the game. Sure. They're above 500, and they have the easiest schedule moving forward of uh, almost any team in football. The problem that I – the only other thing I want to get into here, Mike, is the Walrus because Darren Waller, three for 40. There were uh, what looks like five players with four or more targets in the offense. Jalen Richard, Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller, Josh Jacobs, Tyrell Williams. Zay Jones had three. You know, 21 completions. Where are you? I mean, we talked about this on the right. serious show, too. We compared Hunter Henry to Waller moving forward and said we'd rather have Henry rest of season. But has the league caught on or caught up to Darren Waller to the degree that his floor is a little lower than we thought? I don't know that it's the league has caught up, but the Raiders offense has expanded. When it, when it started out, they had just lost Antonio Brown. And everything went to Tyrell, every, and everything else went to Darren Waller. That that was the offense, or the, the Raiders' passing offense. Now Jalen Richard's getting a little bit more involved. The the kind of emergence of Hunter Renfro. They traded for Zay Jones. They traded for Trevor Davis, and it has negatively impacted feeding the Walrus. Yeah, the the first three games of the year. That's what we remember, right? Boom, ba boom, ba boom. You had the Walrus having top ten tight end performances every single week since that time outside of the first three weeks he's literally only had and it was he was the number one that week against Green Bay but he's only had one top 12 tight end performance and it doesn't take much to be in the top 12 you know what I mean you get 50 yards you Which, might be in the top well he had 40 sure so I mean maybe this is near a top 12 but probably not I mean but his finishes 15 17 13 19 and now whatever this week's going to be, probably 18. Yeah, that's that's not helping you in fantasy. You're not wrong. You can follow the show on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Fantasy Footballers, on Twitter at the FF Ballers, the website's the FantasyFootballers.com. If you're into DFS, there's a bunch of good DFS articles up there uh, this weekend. Got a new Predicting the Top 12 Quarterbacks for Week 10 article up by Kyle. And uh, avail yourself of that. Thanks to everybody who's supporting the show with your reviews over on Apple Podcasts or uh, your subscriptions on Spotify and wherever you're listening. Let's go ahead and take a look at some injuries. What's it going to be, McFly? Are you in or out? Um. All right, in or out, Patrick Mahomes. I say in. Yeah, I say in as well. Matt Ryan. In. In. Lamar Jackson. He'll play. Yep. Yeah, he missed practice. That's why he's in there. Yeah. Uh, Math with an illness. Matthew right. Stafford, the back injury, he's going to play. Yep. I think he'll play. Yeah. How about this one? Jacoby Brissett. This one is tougher. He did get a limited practice in on Thursday. I lean that he will be out, though. Yeah, I do, too. I mean, I lean I, in. I think he's going to play. I, huh? it, it is a true 50 50 situation. Um, do you think Jacoby Brissett is better for the Colts? Yes. As far as the receiving options and fantasy no doubt. output? Yeah, I do. I think he's much better. I think uh, he's playable this week. That's oh, the real thing. Yeah. I mean, I, he's got Miami. So. Yeah, and Hoyer's playable if Brissett is gone too. Lev Bell, in or out? In. Adam Gaze came out and says Lev, both Lev Bell and Herndon are looking good to go. Dun, 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 James Conner. Yeah, that was a quick turnaround of events where Mike Tomlin – on Tuesday, felt like James Conner was trending towards playing, and then Wednesday, no, nah, no, nah, it's highly doubtful. So expect to see James Conner back next week. Out. Yes. Yeah. Alvin Kamara. In. Christian McCaffrey. In. Yep. Matt Breida. In and out. In, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> he's a frequenter of in and out. He loves those burgers. I'm kind of excited. that in the game. Excited for uh, Breida for Monday night. I am. Uh, Raheem Mostert. Yeah, in inconsequential. Amari, oh, I like that inconsequential. Yes, very nice. Amari Cooper. So he had the the whole MRI fiasco going on throughout the week. Apparently, the a doctor took a look, and Amari Cooper said, "Can I play?" And the doctor said, "Yep." So he is trending towards playing. Devonte Adams. Yeah, yeah, he's he's back. We know AJ Green's going to be out. Yep. T.Y. Hilton. That's Doubtful. going to be an out. Adam Thielen. Not out. expected to play this week, no. Josh Gordon, who was dealing with a knee injury, was limited Thursday with an ankle, still supposed to make his debut on Monday night, in or out? In, but I'm not playing. Consequential. Yeah, I'm not playing Josh Gordon until I see it. 
Yep. What about this George Kittle situation? He's dealing with an injury. He's got a Monday night this game. Sucks. This sucks so much. Why couldn't you do this on a week where you're not the Monday night football He's game? He's just not thinking of you, Jay. Kittle. Selfish. But pick if, up Hollister as yes. an emergency play. Yes. If I have George Kittle because he's a game time decision and I want George Kittle, if I know what the, the options are on the waiver wire. It's streaming grossness. And Jacob Hollister is part of that pack, so, so you're, pick him you, up. Yeah, so all George Kittle owners out there probably need to find someone on the roster they can drop to pick up Hollister. Now, I do actually, you think you need I to pick him now, get, or do you just want to wait? I think I would rather play uh, Ross Dwelly, the backup tight end in San Francisco, than I would play roulette with Luke Wilson, Jacob hmm. Hollister, and Ed Dixon now, who's supposed to be ready. Ross, oh. Dwe Ross Dwelly had four catches last week. Red dead. <laughs> Well, you can go Red Dead. No. Chris Herndon. I think he's going to play. How much he will play, it could be one snap. Let's, let's ask this. It could be 40. All right, in or out, your lineup. Out. I think I would I'd play him if I'm streaming and I'm desperate. You going to answer the oh, question man, yourself, I Jason? I, got, I was hoping I got <laughs> off with that answer. No, no, I asked the question. Um, <laughs> I, I would say in. I would be willing to play him this week just because the landscape is bad. The floor is low, but he's got a higher ceiling than most waiver wire guys. It's funny. This week, I feel like we've talked about like 10 other tight ends in that like landscape bad, yep. but kind of optimistic, whether it's TJ Hawkinson or OJ Howard. Howard. I'm playing Gasicki over Herndon. It's decided. I don't sure until I see Herndon out there. I am excited for him to get back out there on the field, but oh, excitement is lost on the Jets this year. Jared Cook in. Okay, Delaney Walker, will he be back? No, uh, I don't think so. He's still not participating in practice on Thursday. Jonu uh, Smith against the Chiefs or Chris Herndon? Oof, Jonu. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's Jonu. All right, news and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Let's go ahead and get back into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. All right. I was reminded that uh, this is just like a delay to tease mm. the anticipation. Oh. Mm -hmm. I certainly didn't forget at the very top of the show. I certainly I, did I not forget. I always like to hit the segment right at about the 12 and a half minute mark. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> Put Clan Friday. I thought you would just throw it at the end of the matchups. Yeah, I was afraid I'd forget again. <laughs> <laughs> if I did that, I was going to, but it is uh, Friday. So a quick shout out, Brandon Wright. You are the winner. Oh, my brother. Oh. Winner of a $55 gift card. Foot Clan Friday winner. That goes to shopballers.com. Every Friday, we uh, give out a $55 gift card to those that support us at jointhefoot.com. All right. Now we're back into the forecast. Gotcha. And congratulations, Brandon. Yesterday, Ravens, Bengals, Bills, Browns, Falcons, Saints, Giants, Jets, Chiefs, Titans. We're not going to talk about them today because we talked about them yesterday. So you can go back and listen. We'll start with the Cardinals Buccaneers game. Cardinals are three, five, and one. Bucks are two and six, and they're four and a half point home favorites in a game with a very high fifty-two point over under. This game is littered with starts of the week. There are four of them in this game. I have Kyler Murray. Mike has Jameis Winston. Jason has both David Johnson and O.J. Howard. So we're expecting this 52-point over-under to come to fruition. This is, these are two teams that are struggling mightily defensively. The Buccaneers are strong against running backs, but everywhere else they're near the basement, whether it's fantasy points given up to the quarterback, wide receiver, or tight end position. You start players against the Buccaneers, and it ends well for you. And the same goes for the Cardinals. If you play against the Cardinals, yes, Patrick Peterson is back. No, it hasn't really mattered much. Whether he's been bad. I think he's out of shape. It's what it's looking like. Or he was in shape for other reasons. He even oh. – Unfortunately. Look, sure, man, no. Look, yeah, man, he's when, back. when you're suspended – I love Patrick Peterson, but when you're suspended for a PD and you come back and play bad – those fingers are going to be pointed. He also admitted this week um, that on the touchdown play he gave up that he didn't really give it his all, which is a weird thing. That's not Patrick Peterson. <laughs> is, that, is that the better out? Like, I don't instead know if of that's like, better. Like, that's I just worse. played bad. Like, no, no, I just. 
I just I, quit on the play, man. <laughs> what do you t- it wasn't like I was bad. I just I gave up. I guess on one hand, I'm glad he admitted it because we all knew it. Right. It, it was an true. ugly play. But I so, mean, look, in the last two games against Patrick Peterson, uh, Mike Evans, and this is the good Patrick Peterson, has six for 70 and one on 18 targets and three for 97 and one on eight targets. So I'm not worried about Mike Evans here getting shut down by a not good looking Patrick Peterson right now. Yeah. Evans and Godwin are auto starts for your lineup. Yep. Winston and Murray can both be played on Bipocalypse. Mm-hmm. They both have high upside weeks. More question marks, I think, around running backs and then the Cardinals wide receiving core. David Johnson, Kenyon Drake, and then Ronald Jones, who, you know, yeah. at least in the news, the from the lips of Bruce Arians, kind of a boost of confidence in Ronald Jones. You can probably play him this week against Arizona. If but you, but if, what's the upside? Is for it me, a, it's not probably. I'm... I'm willing to play Ronald Jones. I think he is a safe play at the R for, for like a running back to the Cardinals technically are 14th against fantasy running backs, but they're just, they're bad all over the board. So Ronald Jones should, should see a, a good amount of carries 18 for 67 with a touchdown last week against Seattle. I think Ronald Jones is up in that 15 plus uh, rushing category. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It's one of those things where if you look at the season and how the running backs have finished for Tampa Bay, they've been pretty good. For fantasy, they've been the worst thing imaginable because you can't ever get the start right. Mm-hmm. We have no idea who's going to get the ball, who's not. Now with Bruce Arians coming out and talking about, okay, it's Ronald Jones's time. Peyton Barber hasn't done anything wrong, but Jones is the more explosive player. He's giving us the best chance. We want to see what we have in him. That gives me the confidence to say, yeah, and in, in, in a plus matchup at home, when you're favored against a bad defense, Ronald Jones is a very good play this week. Let, let me put it like this then. If you're looking at – I know Jason has a lot of confidence in David Johnson, but on the week, our consensus rankings currently are, have Jones ahead. Mike, do you have more confidence in Ronald Jones at home with that uh, boost of confidence than you do in David Johnson – with Kenyon Drake in the backfield, coming off the injury, maybe some uncertainty about playing time. How do you feel about those two guys? I th- I have uh, I do have Ronald Jones slightly above, and by slightly I mean one spot ahead of David uh, Johnson. I think that Jones is the safer play, but his ceiling isn't what what David Johnson is. I'm st- I'm with Jason that I'm willing to put DJ right back in, but. He, you're not putting him in as a top 10 player anymore. Right. We overlooked Kenyon Drake last week or maybe considered him far too high of a risk. But if you played him, he dominated. You were rewarded, yes. And so this week, Kenyon Drake, people want to know, can I put him right back in the lineup? He had a huge game in his debut. Is this a flex-worthy running back? I think he's a low-end flex option. He's a guy that obviously has enough juice in an offense and in a game where there's going to be a lot of points scored. But it's not a great matchup. Not that the 49ers were a good matchup last week. My issue is just I I think he's going to be the minority of the timeshare with David Johnson. So against a tough matchup, I'm not expecting big things for uh, Kenyon Drake here. And I expect David Johnson to be the, the back that's utilized more in the passing game, which is where you beat Tampa Bay. All right, let's go battle of the backups here. So Kenyon Drake or Matt Burita? Burita. Burita. Kenyon Drake or Latavius Murray? Latavius. Yep. Okay, this one's going to hurt some people's feelings. Okay. Kenyon Drake or Joe Mixon? Oh, gosh. I would play Joe Mixon if it was my roster. Yeah, I w- I've got Joe <laughs> Mixon. I would, I would play Mixon too, but I yeah. just, Jason's reaction is exactly why I asked. Yeah. It's, Versus Baltimore, Mixon? It, it stinks. Mixon with Oof. Ryan Finley. Oof. Gross, but I, I would put Mixon in. All right. All right. All uh, right. We'll move beyond this game. Just a heads up, the pace of play. Arizona is second in the NFL. Tampa Bay is ninth. I hope that comes to, you know, that 52-point over-under comes to fruition. I do want to ask a question. Christian Kirk is a good play. Yeah, I'm I'm going to wide receivers right now. Christian Kirk's a good play, but is Larry Fitzgerald actually a good play? Because he hasn't done anything for fantasy on a single-digit game since week three, and he's got a big name, and he kind of sits in people's lineups, maybe their flex spot, thinking you're going to get a, get a great game, and this looks like a great matchup, 
But what are you doing with Larry Fitzgerald, Mike? Is he a solid bench player right now? Yes, he is. I'm benching him. Larry Fitzgerald is is baffling. Like this past week, he played up in the 94 percent of the offensive snaps for Arizona. Before that, he had been kind of sitting in the 70s. But the last three weeks, a, an unbelievably juicy matchup against the New York Giants. One for 12. Wide receiver 87. The New Orleans Saints, where it, they're a tough defense, but they give up points, especially to wide receiver two and quarterback. Fantasy wide receivers, two receptions for eight yards. Wide receiver ninety. San Francisco four for thirty-eight. It's he's on the field. I have no idea why he's not getting more targets the way that he started the year. But yeah, Michael it, Gallup or Larry Fitzgerald? Gallup. I'll play Gallup. Debo Samuel on Monday night against Seattle or Larry Fitzgerald? I think I'm playing Debo. Like Debo's a. He's not a terrible start, and I feel like Larry's a terrible start right now. Could have no George Kittle on Monday night. Yeah, yeah that's that's, oof. that's <laughs> it's tough, man, because he is getting the ten zone targets, you know. So maybe a touchdown could come and save his day. But I think if he doesn't get a touchdown this week, which could happen, he's going to be a bad play, and and certainly not a guy I'm looking to have in my starting lineup or even on my roster right now. I mean, he he's not a guy I. Yeah, about. I think that's fair. That they're, we miss you, Larry. They're at this point for fantasy. They're like I would rather be stashing someone else's high value handcuff than yes. Larry. Yeah. All right. Before we move on to the next matchup, want to thank Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. Earn five percent back at Walmart Online. Games for the kids, headphones for dad, a laptop for mom. It doesn't matter. You get five percent back. At Walmart online, you'll also earn 2% at Walmart in-store, restaurants, and travel, and you get 1% everywhere else. When you want all that, you need the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. What's in your wallet? Terms and exclusions apply. Capital One in A. I'm surprised you just didn't say like a laptop for dad or a book for dad or a... <laughs> it was <laughs> Look, all for don't, dad. Don't forget dad. Might want a new TV for dad. All right, <laughs> hey, we also want to thank Simply Safe for sponsoring and supporting this show. Uh, maybe you've heard this statistic: a burglary happens once every twenty-three seconds in the United States. A lot of the times, we we all have the same goals with our home. We want it to be secure. We want to be safe. But there are things that prevent us from moving that direction because sometimes it's confusing. Sometimes. It's about how expensive a home security system might be, how much time it takes, the contract situation, the hassle. That's not what Simply Safe is about. Well before the time that they were a sponsor of this show, we had purchased the Simply Safe system for our studio. No contract, no hidden fees, no fine print. Yeah, we it, want to thank Simply Safe for protecting our studio. Yeah. Protecting this show. And it starts at just $15 a month for professional monitoring without the contracts. They've won a ton of awards from CNET uh, to Wirecutter. It's pretty easy to vet this company, and they're legit. And so we invite you to visit simplysafe.com slash footballers, and you'll get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. You've got nothing to lose. Go now and be sure you go to simplysafe.com slash footballers so you know that our show sent you over there. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. All right. This was one of the ones that was tempting, this matchup that I'm about to unveil as a almost upset. Lions at 3-4 and 1 head into Chicago, take on the Bears who are 3 and 5. <clears throat> Divisional matchup. Bears are 2 and a half point favorites. Interesting. But it's a 41 uh 41 and a half point over under. Ultimately, I went against it. I do. I think in the end, I decided that the Bears were going to win this football game. This is Mike's upset of the week. So you, you, I got the Lions. So your interesting comment was not related to me thinking. It was related to me rejecting yeah, the almost upset. That you're going with the Bears. Yeah, I am. I am going. You know, divisional game. Both teams obviously need need to win it, but in the end, I think at home, Chicago, the defense will be able to do enough, and that you know, it's hard to kind of back Mitchell Trubisky. Yes. So I'm not going to. But I think the Bears will do do enough elsewhere. Let's talk about uh, the starts in this game. Matthew Stafford is on fire. Uh, leads the NFL in average depth to target, air yards. Last three weeks, he's finished the QB2, the QB5, and the QB4. He was the number one pivot that we brought up if you lost Patrick Mahomes. It was basically, go get Matthew Stafford. The schedule looks great. Mm -hmm. 
And then, you know, we didn't know Carrion Johnson would end up out for the season, but that's also added fuel to the fire of just letting Matthew Stafford step back in the pocket and sling it around to Kenny Galladay, Marvin Jones, TJ Hawkinson and company. This is a difficult matchup for him. Bears are seventh on the season. They're only giving up 14.3 fantasy points per game to the quarterback. And in the wide receiver position, they're fourth in the league. So ordinarily, you'd say, hey, let's beat the Bears by attacking those linebackers. Let's run the ball. That's what's been successful against them this year. But they don't really have anybody to do it. I mean, where's your confidence level on a flex play for either Ty Johnson or a player with a lot of touches last week, J.D. McKissick? So... My, mine is in. Uh, the, I guess a lot of production, not some much sure. touches. But. Uh, to to me, my confidence level in those uh, two players is inside of the toilet. Uh, that's not something. <laughs> that's I wanna, not. A, so, so you took your confidence level and, and I, then put it in the toilet. I well, I, it's I already flushed it, so it's inside of so there. So now it's in the sewer. Is is that what happens? I just assumed it goes into a magic wasteland <laughs> inside of the toilet. Uh, you but, just have a pipe that runs outside the house and just just, just sprays. <laughs> <laughs> Finding Nemo taught me it goes directly to the ocean. Isn't well, yeah, it? all all pipes lead to the ocean. Yeah, uh, so everybody's that's why all those fish that you flush. Yeah, you flush down. They go swim with their families. <laughs> so they swim with <laughs> the they fishes. Float, float, they <laughs> swim with the fish. Yes. Uh, look, I'm 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 still not starting either of those guys. I realize the bears can be beat on the ground. But I don't think they can just be beat on the ground by anybody out there. They're, you know, if you've got a good running back, a good running game, maybe you can take it to this Bears defense. But this is in Chicago. The defense, there it is. So Look I, out below! I always thought when you flush it, it hits the Ninja Turtles. And I, so I always thought where, where they so live, flush. they don't smell, it doesn't smell very good down there. Mm. No, it wouldn't. The, the sewers <laughs> are not going to smell good. That's why they have so much pizza. All right, but Mike, still confident to roll Stafford out there. He's our quarterback 10 he, on the week, despite the matchup. Yes, personally, I'm still willing to roll Matt Stafford out. The, the matchup is it's about as tough as they get against the Chicago Bears, seventh against fantasy quarterbacks. But the, the game plan for the Lions just creates safety. Now, the floor, it it, it certainly is lower, like – uh, his his matchup in Green Bay, he ended up with 265 yards, but no touchdowns, and it was uh, quarterback 21 on on that week. But I think that 265 yards that is his floor. It's just does he get the touchdown or not? Yeah, and and I think he's got a good chance of getting the touchdown. He's been electric. He has you know you you look at okay Philip Rivers has led the league in in passing yards, but he hasn't necessarily. Looked great doing it. Matthew Stafford has looked amazing. Uh, last week alone, he had two of those Pat Mahomes no-look passes. I don't know if you guys saw those. He had one where it was downfield, two defenders crossing, threads the needle with a no-look pass. This should have been everywhere. He's just he's in a groove right now. He's balling out. Now, the back issue that, that you know popped up, made him limited Thursday. It's popped up all year. Yeah. It, There's no difference in this injury than what he's been dealing with all season long. I think he can get it done in this game. I... You know, it's it's not uh, it's not a smash play. It's a difficult matchup, but I like this game for David Montgomery a lot. Oh yeah, I mean the Lions defense. You mix that with the Bears being at home, they're favored. It's a low over under, and Mitchell Trubisky's a liability when he steps back to pass the football. So last two games, forty eight touches, one hundred and seventy five rushing yards, seven catches, forty eight receiving yards, and three touchdowns for David Montgomery. He's a smash play this week, yes. and. Uh, Allen Robinson, it really doesn't matter to fantasy owners you, how good we think he is. You still play him. Last week sucked. It felt really, really bad. But uh, with this matchup, I'm still playing him. All right, TJ Hawkinson's my tight end start of the week. The Bears are giving up points to the tight end position, including five uh, really nice performances against them this year. And then I have word that Trey Burton mm. is actually Jay Grizz's start of the week. <laughs> Really? Because Jay Grizz is trying to get a, a this, solid zero. I feel like Troy Burton's banged up. I feel like Nagy was talking about that. Yeah. Well, he was also out there getting it, one of the seven like, errant throws that Mitchell Trubisky threw last week was his way. I don't want to put this on him, but I feel like this is a homer pick. Oh, for, oh, for Jay, Jay Grizz? Grizz? Jay Grizz. That's, that's how I view it a yeah. little bit. He needs to be unbiased. Right. That's, why, like that's why I went Kyler Murray as the uh, start of the week at 
quarterback. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I would go – I'll bet Jay Grizz would pivot to someone like Adam Shaheen. That's fair. Okay. You know. Dolphins, 1-7. and seven. Colts, 5-3. and three. Colts are 12-and-a-half-point favorites. It's a 44-point over-under the games at home in Indianapolis. They just lost the nail-biter. I don't have any illusions that the Dolphins are going to compete in this one myself. Being 12-and-a-half point favorites while you don't know who your quarterback is is incredible. Like, usually the game line is off. Right. You, you can't bet on a game where they're not sure who the quarterback's going to be. They're like, it don't matter. <laughs> they're, they're fine. These aren't the Jets. Yeah, Jacoby Brissett, I would play him if he's back out there. Marlon Mack, you've got to start him. T.Y. Hilton should be out. So what's your alternate upside play pass catcher-wise for the Colts? It's it's Zach Pascal, man. It's, it's Pascal's season. He has filled in pretty admirably when he has had to. Uh, week three, and like, and he just he just pops in when they need him. When, when they don't need Pascal, he just he gets you like zero points. But when they need him, he jumps in, you know, week three, two for 53 and a touchdown, 72 yards the next week. Then they didn't need him in week five. Yeah, he and, says, it's good, goodbye. But then two weeks later, six for 106. Then he, they didn't need him. They he took a week off. Take a little vacate. A little one for six. And then five for 76 with a <clears throat> touchdown. Like, the he, night, he's in, and, and it's the Dolphins. People, yeah. it's the Dolphins. The nice thing is he's been in on 100% of snaps the last two weeks. I think Chester Rogers could be more involved. He's a decent player as well. But if you've got to pick one of these wide receivers, it's Zach Pascal. If I've got to pick a just a receiver that's not necessarily a wide receiver, I actually think Eric Ebron is a really good play because Ooh. he has been the squeakiest wheel You buy ever. the narrative that he had a sit-down meeting. Yeah, well, is I mean, yeah, I guess that is a narrative, but it's also a fact. He sat down to talk to Frank Reich. Oh, he didn't stand. He sat. About his role. He's been very unhappy with his utilization. Look, this is a guy who had a... Well, he's a pro bowler last year. He had a ton yeah. of touchdowns. He's feeling like he's being he's a weapon that's not being utilized. Yeah, and the team could could use him. So if, if T.Y. Hilton is out, I, I think Eric Ebron here against the Dolphins should be a really good play. So if you're in a flex situation, you'd flex Ebron over Pascal? No, I think Pascal's targets are going to be a little bit more assured and so the the ceiling, I think, you know, but Eric Ebron probably has a higher touchdown upside. So I'm usually the safe risk averse type player where I will take targets over touchdown opportunities. Speaking of safe, on the other side of the ball, we have a quote. This is from Jason. He said, quote, I love Devontae Parker. This was from earlier this week. Do we have the sound bite? Did, did that get in here? I don't have the sound bite. Brooks or, uh... um, we, we wanted to spare our ears. No, Devontae Parker's been really, really good. In six of eight games, he has 55, 55 oh! yards. The question, or, or more, or more, that would the, be really specific. Oh, on the dot, yeah. Six of his games, he gets fifty-five <laughs> yards exactly. But this feels like it was forced in. It, I love it. It does feel forced in. The fact that it wasn't exact, but he does have a touchdown in four of the last five games. He's been performing well. This has the feeling to me of a trap game for Devontae Parker. Loses Preston Williams on the road, heavy underdogs, 15-point implied point total. To me, this is the game where we all, you know, we all buy in and then we all weep. I totally get that. It's going to be easier for the uh, Dolphins' coverage to roll to Parker to, uh, you know, shut him down. That's probably part of why... Mike has made Mike Gesicki the start of the week is that, you know, he's going to be more open with the Preston Williams situation. Where I think Devontae Parker can still succeed is that as the Dolphins are down, I don't think it's ever going to stop with just throwing it up to Devontae Parker over and over and over. So, yeah, this could be a trap game, but I am still fine playing him solely because I think he's going to have a lot of deep targets. And it when you when you get deep targets – you know, you you don't have to have. You could have a good game with four receptions, and you know, I would expect him to be up in the eight to twelve target range. Are you playing Christian Kirk, who we talked about earlier against Tampa Bay? Or are you playing Ooh. Devontae Parker against Indianapolis? I love Christian Kirk this week. I, I I think that there's just too many points scored in the Arizona Buccaneers game to rely on a Dolphin. And what about Pascal on the other side versus Parker? 
Uh, I think I would go Parker there. I'd go Pascal. Okay. Kalen Balaj will get the start. Uh, will you be happy with the fact that he's starting? Mm. If you are mm. Balaj's mother, mm. then yes, you'll be like, yay. Do we mean like fantasy players? That is entirely what I mean. No. No. Okay. And then we may see some Miles Gaskin. He's a seventh round rookie. I'm not excited about, you know, it won't just be Gaskin potentially. Uh, what is it, Laird, that will have an opportunity yeah, maybe? Yeah, it, it will be – if there's a secondary opportunity, though, it, it will go to Miles Gaskin. Uh, and just by the way, the Colts defense, sixth against fantasy running back. So this is not just a take against Kalen Balage. It is. Yeah. But it's also the matchup is really rough. Uh, by the way, if you were a huge fan of the year 2013 – there's the potential for a Brian Hoyer, Ryan Fitzpatrick matchup in this one, Ooh, yeah. which would really bring me back. All right, Panthers five and three take on the Packers at seven and two. This game's in Green Bay. The Packers five and a half point favorites in a forty-seven and a half point over under. It was a bad game last week for Green Bay, compounded by the fact that and our, our resident Al Borland Packer fan d posted yesterday <laughs> how. <laughs> Did we get our butts kicked by this Chargers team that we saw on the field last night? This is the NFL, baby. Any you, week. You, you know? ain't no Raiders. Yeah, you ain't, no, you ain't no Raiders, Al. <laughs> How does that make you feel? <laughs> uh, but what do we think takes place in this game? The Packers, 26-point implied point total, 20 for the Panthers. Kyle, Kyle Allen looks to be the quarterback rest of the season, obviously, for the Panthers. Uh, this is what they've got to go on. They have Christian McCaffrey, dot, 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 the rest. McCaffrey's going out there, but what do you expect from the Panthers' offense, and are there other weapons that you can count on? Yeah, so I, I think the Panthers, uh, I you know, when I look at the, the game as a whole and try to project what I think the is going the outcome's going to be, I, th I think the, the Packers are going to slap the Panthers around here. I think coming off of that atrocious game last week, they're going to – be up for this matchup and uh, you know they're they're pretty good against the pass I don't think Kyle Allen and Curtis Samuel and uh, DJ Moore are the guys that are really going to crush him now Christian McCaffrey obviously he's going to be great right. this is the weakness of the Packers defense is their running game so you know if they can pound the rock a ton and stay close in this game m maybe I'm wrong but I I do think on the flip side that Aaron Rodgers is going to have a very good game. You know, he is much better at home in Lambeau. You and look at, in, the, in this year. Yes. He's a much better quarterback this year than he has been in a while. Highest yards per attempt since 2014. Yep. And to speak quickly to the wide receivers, I'm, DJ Moore is interesting. I mean, the last four weeks, eight targets, 10, 9, 10, and he's been solid for fantasy. He hasn't scored in that time. But he's getting the target volume. He's a first-round pick. He's the go-to guy for Kyle Allen. So DJ Moore is at least interesting to me as a, as a wide receiver three player. Sure. He's, he's been top 24 three of the, the last four games. So that, that speaks to that. Any starting wideouts you're interested in on Green Bay outside of Devontae Adams? Just Adams. And then Aaron Jones, my start of the week. Think he bounces back. And Jamal Williams could have an opportunity against the 28th-ranked Panthers defense in terms of points given up to the – Running back position, Williams could keep it going. Uh, would potentially need you know another touchdown like he's been pulling That's, in the last four weeks. He's just been a touchdown machine. Get down near the goal line and it, but the the reality is whoever the back is has been pretty successful getting those touchdowns. All right, and then uh, Greg Olson or Jimmy Graham in this game. Who do you like more? I'm gonna go with Greg Olson. Uh, the the Packers have not been very good against tight ends. They're they're 26, giving up 11.7. Fantasy points per game, and you know, I think all I'm of done. Those, I think I'm done with him. You think you're completely with, with out, Jimmy with, Graham? No, I'm no, sorry, Greg with Greg Olson. Oh. I think I'm done with Greg Olson. Well, you asked the question, Greg Olson or Jimmy Graham? That's fair, very fair. <laughs> so I, please don't put, yeah, because if you're out on Olson, that means you're in on Jimmy Graham. Oh well, yeah, I, I just totally mean the, la the last five times you played Greg Olson, you were really disappointed, even in good matchups. What so. three for four, you man? That's a Darren Waller line, and you're disappointed. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say this is he was uh, the here's here's his last few uh, games going backwards his his positional finish to speak to Andy. Uh he was the 22nd tight end, the 32nd tight end, the 14th tight end, the 84th tight end and the 46th 
tight end. That so seems impossible. The first three weeks, uh, the first three weeks, he was he was rather good, especially against Tampa Bay and Arizona. Go figure. The eighty fourth uh, seems arbitrary. Like there were like twenty seven that played that, that week, was, but that then was they're a, like, was that a goose? That was a goose. Yeah. yeah. So you're but just you're with guys that didn't play, right? Basically. All right, Rams, Steelers. This game, uh, the Rams are three and a half point favorites, 43 and a half point over under. Another game I was slightly tempted to go with the almost upset pick, but didn't. The Steelers have gotten it done three consecutive weeks despite inconsistent play for Mason Rudolph, despite the injuries to James Conner, despite not knowing exactly what Juju Smith-Schuster you're going to get. It hasn't really mattered. The defense has come, come out and shown out the last three weeks, and it's been impressive. I just think it's going to be a little bit too much to handle when it comes to the Rams coming off the bye. Do you have any? Uh, you know, Cooper Cup is an auto start. Todd Gurley, I imagine he's in your lineup. But where's your confidence level with the other wideouts on Los Angeles? Robert Woods, Josh yeah, Reynolds. Rob, Robert Woods is a very difficult case. I and mean, we're, we're making that decision in League One of, of do you flex in Robert Woods? Do you try and – do you believe he will seize this opportunity Yes, without Brandon Cooks? Oh, I mean, I, look, I, I'm the I Robert Woods – I yield the floor. I'm the Robert Woods apologist, but he – you know, I, I don't think anything has happened to where Robert Woods all of a sudden – isn't a good wide receiver at the age that he's at. Um, you know, it hasn't it hasn't been great for him so far, but the team needs him. They've got extra time. They're coming off of a bye. It, I mean, I'm not saying he's a top 10 guy. Right now, in my rankings, he's my wide receiver 21. But that's a guy that you start, usually. I mean, hopefully you got three top 10 wide receivers. But in reality, most people are going to be talking about, do you start – uh, you know, Curtis Samuel, Robert Woods, Sammy Watkins, you know, and, and if I'm in that tier, I'm yeah, going with Woods. Robert Woods. It's been a rough year. We've got this very large sample now. It does you are continuing your redemption storylines of the week with the Robert Woods uh pick there last four weeks that he's played sixty second, twenty fifth, thirty third, thirty eighth. But I've been waiting for it on one of my teams. I was waiting for Robert Woods of yesteryear to show up. Talked I like, about I like it how you didn't go five back. <laughs> you mean he was the wide receiver three? Why don't we go six back? Fifty fifth, seventh <laughs> back, sixty ninth, eight back, thirtieth. Stop. Yeah. By the way, you make been, it stop. We did. I did post a like I posted the Sammy oh. Watkins uh, on the season consistency chart graph, and a lot of people were wondering where that came from. That's our like we have that for every player where we map out exactly their fantasy finishes over the year, and you can see which players are more or less consistent. You can get kind of a mental picture to go with the narratives that or the film and see where these guys are finishing. And you can check all that out at jointhefoot.com and get access immediately to any player that you want to see that data on. Um, look, I, I don't want to poop on Robert Woods. I need him to perform for my team, but I'm, I'm definitely worried in this matchup. Cooper Cup is the player I'm less worried about. Pittsburgh is allowing the most slot wide receiver fantasy points per game. Oh, gosh. Uh, and Cooper Cup owns the slot. He, yeah. uh, he has the deed. He owns it. It's in his filing cabinet. The title. Yes. Uh, otherwise, Juju, he's the wide receiver 33 on the season. I'd be a little worried in this game. <laughs> he's going to get the Jalen Ramsey treatment. Maybe. I mean, Juju Maybe definitely. Yeah, I'm on the definitely Maybe definitely side. for sure. And mm. and you mix Mason Ruda I, I'm outside the top 24 on the week. I'll take oh, it. Oh, yeah. You want it? Yeah. Okay. Water bet. I feel like I was pretty generous with that number there, so we'll see what happens. But uh, Juju, it just takes one big play, but with Mason Rudolph at the helm, I guess I'm not that confident. And if they don't have James Conner moving the football, we'll see what happens. Are you, are you taking a shot on Gerald Everett in the absence of Brandon Cooks? Yes. Okay. Everett or Gesicki? Oh. I Man, that's ridiculously tough. Like it, it should easily be Gerald Everett. But his last, the last game, it's still, it's imprinted, man. It's tattooed on my brain of Brandon Cooks going out and then for some reason, Gerald Everett dropping down to 43% of the snaps. Is it's because he's a tight end, man. I mean, that, that this is the reality. No tight ends 
that aren't those giant names are consistent week to week. They're just not. So if you want someone who every single week is involved in getting the targets, it's not going to happen unless his name is Travis Kelsey or George Kittle. So what you have to look at is what is his upside? What can he do when he does get the targets? You know, two of the last three games, they've been bad. But that's that's pretty common for tight ends. Three of the last five games have been great. Right. So you know that he can get it done. I think Gerald Everett is a guy that you play in those circumstances. All right, Vikings six and three take on the Cowboys at five and three. We finally found it. Oh. Andy's almost upset of the week. Cowboys are three point favorites. It's a forty eight point over unders, and I'm going with the Vikings in this one. As am I. Okay, there you go. Uh, Dak Prescott and company at home. Look, this game is it's defined by what we've been able to see. Ezekiel Elliott do on the ground to me and the Vikings are very stout when it comes to stopping the running game so it's going to be in Dak Prescott's hands Amari Cooper always a, a a terrifying proposition when you watch him out there and you rely on him and you say hey I hope I hope he stays in for the duration of this game because he's been incredible um, but banged up should be playing He's our wide receiver eight if he's out there. Where's your confidence level in Dak, however, when it comes to facing this Vikings defense? Right. Dak is – he's a different type of quarterback for sure, but the, uh, the Vikings right now 10th against fantasy quarterback, so it is not a plus matchup by any means. But I'm I'm still playing him. He, he, Dak Prescott has six quarterback one performances. That's tied with Deshaun Watson for second – most uh, QB one performances. He's he's been very very reliable, and I'm playing. I'm still playing Dak as a top ten guy. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, Minnesota is not a great matchup, but it's it's not the worst. And if they can shut down the run a little bit, they're going to need to rely on Dak to to make something happen. And while I don't doubt that the game starts out Dak being poor, because it, it seems like every week he's got to get it going eventually lately. Dak has been very good. He's the quarterback four on the year right now, uh, ahead of Aaron Rodgers, ahead of Matthew Stafford. And he, is that you know, total points or points per game? That is that's total points, but he's had a bye week, so even better. Now okay. I'm looking at the stream finder here. Minnesota has given up top ten points to the quarterback position twice. Number nine against Philadelphia, and number two when they played against Matt Stafford. I mean that's rough. Yeah, and on the flip side, there's only been two games where Dak hasn't been top ten. Ooh, so hard, hard place. Rock, hard place. Oh, oh. Something's got to give. Yep. Uh, uh, Zeke think, and Dalvin are, by the way, obviously must starts there yeah. in your lineup. If this was a buy sell, I would sell top ten. But I still think he's. Uh, but do you still play him? Yeah, then? I think he's a guy that you can play. I just don't think the 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 ceiling is really there for for a great week. But he's always got the ability to have a rushing touchdown added to the mix. I mean, that's just so common for him. Stephon Diggs, without Adam Thielen, confidence level in this matchup <laughs> on the road? Uh, no, but I play. But I play him. The, the, his floor is one reception. It's it's outrageous. It's outrageous how far Stephon Diggs' variance of one reception or he's six receptions for 150 yards and two scores. Yeah, I think he's in your lineup. Yeah. Michael Gallup hasn't done a lot lately. It looks like PFF has him lined up uh, against Xavier Rhodes. Rhodes allowing a 121.5 QB rating this year. Can Michael Gallup take advantage of that matchup with Cooper um, – up against Trey Wayans? Certainly can, but he also had a plus matchup last week when he went two for 33, he scored. Yeah, it seems like he his a, range of outcomes. He is. had a plus matchup a couple weeks ago against Philadelphia where he was three for 34 and then had a pretty good matchup against the Jets and he was four for 48. Robert, Robert Woods or Michael Gallup? Woods. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I would take Woods here. Zach Pascal or Michael Gallup? Pascal. Yeah. I agree. Um, the 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 uh, the over under of forty eight points here in this game, based on kind of how we're talking about these matchups, I imagine that we are on the expecting the under 
on this game? Is that how you feel? Because talking through these players, yes. I'm not really excited. You know, everybody's ceiling is limited. The 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 big blow up play seems capped in this game, and so that would imply it's going to be a you know more of a defensive struggle for these two good quarterbacks. I would probably take the under. Yeah. Monday night football. Looking forward to this one. The seven and two Seahawks against the eight and oh forty niners. Forty niners are six point favorites with a forty seven point over under. It seems a little high. Seems a little high to me. I I picked the Seahawks. So it seems high to you too then. Uh, yeah. Based on that. Russell Wilson has been incredible. Jimmy Garoppolo has a new weapon in Emmanuel Sanders. Jason has Emmanuel Sanders as his start of the week this week. Do you think that Sanders is a top 15 wide receiver rest of season? Ooh. Top 15 is too aggressive for me. I think he's a solid wide receiver too rest of season. I agree. I, I the, the reason he is a top 15 talent for sure, but I think that with the San Francisco 49ers, most games they're not going to need to throw it a bunch, and so they're not going to. Their running game is so good. Their defense is outstanding. But this specific matchup, I definitely think he's going to be a top 15 wide receiver because Russell Wilson and the Seahawks should be able to score on this very good 49ers defense. They've they've been able to score on anybody, and their defense isn't that great either. So you know, I expect a higher scoring affair here. I'd rather have players in this game than in the Cowboys Vikings game. And, you know, it's whew, prime time Monday night. Yeah. The Seahawks defense hasn't been good. The 49ers has, but Russell Wilson is a magician. And Chris Carson, last week we saw Kenyon Drake do some work against the sure. 49ers defense. Carson, you can't really pull him from your lineup. Tyler Lockett, Monster Week last week. DK Metcalf, both of these guys were in the top five in terms of Week 9 finishes. Josh Gordon might be making his debut. Could uh, help open some things up. Again, I don't expect a lot from Gordon playing time-wise or production-wise in this game. But let's keep our eyes on it because as, th as we move forward, Russell Wilson can make uh, a lot of fantasy owners happy. Now, for Jimmy Garoppolo, the, the, the Seahawks have given up a QB1 performance Six straight weeks, and Jimmy Garoppolo is coming off of his best game. We're, I mean, we're focused on Emmanuel Sanders, but what about Jimmy Garoppolo? I like it. I like it at home. I like what we saw last week. He wasn't just lucking himself into plays. It wasn't just yak attack, right? Like right. He's not just swinging it out wide and watching Debo run wild. Garoppolo looked like a very competent, solid. I mean, he has best game of his of his career last week, arguably. What if he's yeah. kittleless? If he's kittleless, it hurts. Yeah, yeah it, obviously. And, that, and you don't know till Monday. That's the problem. Yeah, you're not going to be able to know. Right now, I think Kittle's going to play. And Emmanuel Sanders opens a lot up for the team, not just like, oh, now Jimmy's got a number one. But now when you look at Debo Samuel and Dante Pettis as twos and threes in the NFL, that's, that's a good – Twos and fours. Oh. <laughs> sure. How quickly they fall. Um, but my point is, those guys are, they make up a very good wide receiver core right now. And in a matchup against uh, Seattle, yeah, I'm, I'm totally down to play Jimmy Garoppolo this week. Anything else you're watching in this matchup other than uh, the final score, seeing if the 49ers finally get knocked off? Just watching what, the, what happens with Josh Gordon. Like, does, how, how many snaps does Gordon get? Does Gordon just kind of eat into the DK Metcalf role because they're very similar players? That's yeah. what I'm watching for. Yeah, fair enough. Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. All right, we're bringing you our Ballers on a Budget picks for Week 10. Don't miss your chance to hang out with us, win an all-expenses-paid trip to Arizona, come see a show, hang out. The Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series, that's what we're talking about. You just go to FanDuel.com slash ballers. You can enter fresh every week, participate in the competition with the listeners, FanDuel.com slash ballers. Let's go to our Ballers on a Budget picks, the best value plays in our minds for this week. Jason, why don't you kick it off? Yeah, I'm going to kick it off with Christian Kirk. I talked this episode how much I liked him. Uh, look, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, four of their last five games, they've given up a top six wide receiver fantasy points scored against at the position, and Christian Kirk is the centerpiece for the Cardinals' fast-paced offense. 
He, he's not been phenomenal, but he's had a lot of great games. The targets have been there. And I think against this Tampa Bay uh, defense, it for 5,700, uh, he's a guy that, you know, I was I was doing a, a, a DFS draft with uh, Al Smiz and we, where we go back and forth. We were both targeting Christian Kirk. I lost out on him, but I want him in my FanDuel lineups. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go with Jamal Williams, actually, at 5600 Aaron Jones costs 7600 so you're saving $2,000 at the running back position. I spent a lot of the week talking about Aaron Jones. He's my start of the week. Part of the reason was Carolina's given up back-to-back -to -back top five running back performances, and we have to uh, recognize the fact that it could be a Jamal Williams week. That it, that's always a possibility, and Jamal Williams will be less owned than Aaron Jones. He's 2000 less. So I think Jamal Williams is a very upside, opportunistic it's play a, this week. It's a good pivot. I'm going to go with a wide receiver. I'm taking Calvin Ridley. He's only 5300 bucks on FanDuel. He's taking on the Saints. We've already highlighted that they do give up points to the fantasy wide receiver. In his first game, without Mo Sanu, this game also did not have Matt Ryan. Calvin Ridley still was able to go 4 for 70. He went from the low 60% of the offensive snaps up to the 80% mark. That's he, the big number. Yeah, I mean, he he is now the wide receiver too. There's no question about it moving forward. I expect Matt Ryan to play, and I think that's some I, – I think it'll be a good scoring game for fantasy, so I want in on Calvin Ridley for cheap. All right, again, fanduel.com slash ballers to enter that. One update, just giving everybody out there the context for what's been said about George Kittle and his availability for Monday night – Kyle Shanahan said, we'll see about his availability. And then George Kittle came out and said, quote, I mean, there's issues. He wouldn't divulge the results of the Kittle MRI. Oof. He said he's got things in his knee and ankle. And so we saw him suffer the injuries on the I first say, play from scrimmage against Arizona. If you remember it, he, it looked like he hyperextended his knee. He went down like a sack of potatoes. He, it looked like he wasn't going to come back. He did. Yeah. He toughed it out and came and this had a great is, game. This is really interesting because when you started to say that, I, I assumed he was going to say the opposite because a couple weeks back there was a little bit worry. He missed practice. People were like, oh, no, do we need to worry? And his comments to the reporters were like, dude, I'm totally fine. I'm I'm not missing anything. Right. Like He was so bullish. And now to have that same person come out and say there's issues. After another injury on the field yeah. compared to what he was dealing with before. Mm -hmm. It's a, like I said, I would personally, I'd pick up Ross Dwelly. But you're picking somebody over, over Hollister. Like if I'm doing the Monday night pivot, that's yeah. who I would go with. But, you know, you could take your shot with Hollister. I mean, two touchdowns last week, that's far more productive than the four for 29 Dwelly had. But, you know, is, Kittle's is worth, upside is so high let, that it's worth the risk to me right. to, to take that alternate I, pick. I totally agree with you, but I'm just throwing one scenario out. Let's say someone like Eric Ebron is on waivers. A, a a a decent right. start, you know. I think he's our tight end seven. Would you be willing to, you know, you're the fantasy owner. Would you pick up Eric Ebron and play him so you get a a better option than a Ross Dwelly, or is Kittle worth the wait? He's a hundred percent worth the wait to me. Yeah, I and because part of it's what you said. Part of it's he's battled through injuries. Even last week, we thought he wouldn't come back. He comes back. He dominates. And then the other games where he was questionable, he just plays through it. So I still put the – I'm still thinking he's a favorite to play. So I guess to me, I, I don't want to go down with a one-for-seven Eric Ebron in a big-time winning matchup. Mike, how do you weigh in? I there? would wait. You would wait? Yeah. All right, I want to thank the studio sponsor today, Pristine Auction, an Alvin Kamara signed jersey. Oh, my. Oh, Super Camario, $68.57 on pristineauction.com. Invincibility not included. I think some of that um, mushroom went to Latavius Murray over the last couple of weeks. Uh, it's a star, Sorry, Andy. Sorry, yeah. How dare you? Yeah, maybe maybe Murray got the mushroom <laughs> and only Super Camario gets the star. Sure. I, I do think that there's going to be a pretty even workload in this game. I, I've been saying it for the whole week. Uh, it only takes one or two touches from Alvin Kamara to make your week, but you know he came out and said today he's happy to share the load with Latavius Murray. I don't know if that's kind of a pre-comment so people don't question it after the game when it happens or if we just see all of Alvin Kamara. 
But yeah, I think Murray has a pretty good week. I've definitely cooled on my hot take of how good a, a game Kamara is going to have. He, he's still a, a guy, obviously, you're going to start, but he's more of a top 12 guy than a top three this week. All right. Make sure uh, you check out Pristine Auction. Like I said, use the code BALLERS. You can head over to jointhefoot.com. You'll get game day alerts. All of these injuries, like we gave you our best guess on Friday, but there'll be more practice reports. There might be more news, more definitive news about that Kittle probability uh, we'll share that with you on social at the FF Ballers on Twitter and a whole lot more. Uh, have an awesome week in Foot Clan. It's going to be a very fun week five heading into the playoffs. We'll get you ready to go. We week want those five. All right, did I say week five? <laughs> what? what? What happened? Ten. <laughs> Double it. Ah, uh, 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 hey, see you later, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Remember, Foot Clan, Simply Safe makes home security easy with no contract, hidden fees, or fine print. Just 15 bucks a month. You get that 24 7 professional monitoring throughout your home. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. You'll get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. Simplysafe.com slash footballers.